What's going on guys? Welcome back. So uh, today I'm going to be going over uh, my Honda 4Trax 300. I'm going to go through how I was able to snorkel it and then also make it watertight so I can go through water and stuff like that and I have to worry about the motor sucking up water or getting any water into the diffs of the carb or anything like that. So uh, I'm going to go over what I did. I'm going to start first with the uh, snorkel and then show you guys how I ran the vent line. So let's get into it. All right. So the first thing I want to get into is the uh, snorkeling part. That's the most important. So that is what's going to uh, take the airbox intake. Um, which is usually right below the gas tank. Uh, it's a plastic intake. It usually goes into uh, the air box. Let me get the seat off. It usually goes into the air box right there. Okay, and it comes up and then goes under the tank. So that would mean that the deepest you could go as far as water would be right up to the bottom of the tank. So that's no good, obviously, especially if you want to go deep in water. So what I did is this, so um, I'll put a, uh, uh, in the description, I'll put exactly what you're going to need, but I can go over it with you here. So basically what you're gonna need is, there's a fitting here that goes into the air box. This piece right here is still white, you can see. Um, what that is, that is a uh, one and a half inch to one and a quarter reducer. And then that goes into the air box and the clamp, you can see, just tightens around that. I just RTV'd it for extra sealant. Um, and then you have a 45 PVC that comes off of that. Um, you make that connect to another 45. So there's a piece of straight there. It's probably about three inches, three to four inches long that connects to this 45. This is a straight piece. This is probably about 14 inches long and goes from this connector to this 45 connector. And then there's a straight piece right here, uh, which connects to this 45 connector. So you're gonna have a total of one, two, three, four 45s. Then another straight piece here, short piece. This will be probably about five, maybe five inches long, six inches long uh, straight piece. Then this is gonna go to a 90. Then to this straight piece here, this piece is about 24, 28 inches long and then this is a 90 right here and i plan on making a tip like a fancy kind of tip but i just didn't i didn't have the time so i just kind of left it like that it looks fine to me so and then what you want to do is you also want to make sure that all these connections are sealed with like some type of pvc cement or something to keep them watertight and then also keep them from moving so and then what i did was uh, i just secured this one with the zip tie right around the starter here it's been working fine so far. I drilled two small holes to the plastics here, and that keeps this from moving. It's actually pretty solid, it doesn't move at all. And then right here is where I did the um, hose clamp. So I just clamped that around there to keep that steady. So that would be how you would snorkel that. All right, so next uh, we'll go to one of the more important vent lines. So there's a crankcase vent. Um, it usually comes up and goes under the tank as well. All of the lines for the diffs and everything will go under the tank from the factory. Those will all come out. You have to pull this tank off. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. It comes right out. Uh, make sure you turn the fuel off to the carb and pull the um, main line off the carb. This is the PCV line. You can kind of see it. Um, I have it wrapped here. This is where it comes out of. It just wraps around here and then tees off right back there. You can see it. So what I did was I just put a hole in the side of the air box here because you can run this up to the top of the snorkel, but it just looks kind of crappy in my opinion when you have a big old tube running up the side of your uh, your snorkel. So um, I learned this from uh, Mud Puppy on YouTube. So he just had uh, uh, his crankcase vent just going right into his um, airbox. So that's all I did. I just drilled a hole that was about the same size diameter of the crankcase vent hose, shoved it in there, RTV'd inside and out to seal it. Um, and then that's that's been working fine. I haven't gotten any water in the airbox. Last time I went out, I did, but that was because this was not sealed correctly. So I put a bunch more RTV around the, the lid um, and then let it dry and then pushed it down. And it's been, it seems to be fine now. So that is how you would vent the crankcase vent. Next would be to vent the front diff. So you can see the front diff has a little nipple here. So what I did was I went on Amazon and I got, I think it's eighth inch tubing. I, I'll post the, um, the description of what I got. I'll post a link for it on Amazon, but it was pretty cheap. I think it was like 25 bucks and you get 50 feet. It might have even been cheaper than that. But so this is ran all the way up through the top. Um, and then you can see it comes out here. I just ran them through here. I didn't really want to cut any holes or anything uh, for the snorkel or for the vent line. So they all just came up through here. I have all of the vent lines wrapped around and then just zip tied all the way up to the top. So 
ideally you want these facing down so that if it rains or any water or anything like that it's not just going to go in but i have them like kind of turned off to the side and i haven't had any problems yet so it should be fine um so let's talk about the carburetor now so this is another important one because if you get water in the carb um you're kind of screwed so i have this vent line here i left this clear so i can see if there's any water getting in there uh to the carb and then i just teed it off to the black tubing that goes all the way up to the top of the snorkel so i just connected those this goes on the carb you could probably see it let me get in there right off the side of the carb is a like a little nipple right there and that's where that's going to go i just zip tied it on it's right off the side of the carb uh, and then you just run that same thing all the way up to the top of the snorkel uh, and then after that you would come and vent the rear differential very simple so that just comes off of there zip tied runs all the way up to the front I ran all of these underneath the uh, gas tank. Everything's zip tied so it doesn't hang down or get caught on anything. All right, and the last one that you're gonna have to vent is going to be your uh, gear case. So that's this one here. There's a little nipple that comes off the front right there. Uh, that is where you're gonna hook the other vent line to. Run that one up all the way up to the very top of your snorkel. So that's all four. So you'd have the carburetor vent, front diff, rear diff, and the uh, gear casing, all vented, and then obviously the air box for the big old snorkel there. So uh, I didn't have to rejet or anything like that. The car, I mean, it still runs fine. It starts fine, idles good and everything. So uh, you can pretty much run with a stock carburetor uh, without jetting it, even though you snorkel it, depending on, I guess, your elevation though, because I've had people uh, in different states that are at different elevations that have had to rejet, but mine is fine, runs absolutely perfect. Uh, but with this, I mean, you can pretty much go to Right about there, which on me is about chest deep, a little high, almost to my neck in water, which is pretty damn deep. I don't really go that deep, but what's nice with these bikes is you can kind of stand on the back racks in the water and pull the front up. So that gives you some more, you know, room for error. You can go a little bit deeper and then just kind of float on the top of the water. So the thing I would say too is that I'm going to eventually have to vent this gas cap because obviously you can see there's an on and off switch here. So what happens is when it's an on, uh, the gas cap will vent and let uh, fuel flow into the carburetor as soon as you turn it off it it stops water from coming into the tank um, but then the carburetor doesn't get gas so that can cause problems uh, you know especially if you're in the water and you don't want to get water in the tank but if you don't have fuel in the carburetor then you're not gonna you're not gonna run so what people do i guess is they take this out and they drill like a little barb down in there and then they have a little piece of uh, like tubing like this come off the barb and they just run it up to the top of the snorkel so that will be next uh, then this bike will be completely water uh, that's pretty much it guys so we're going to be riding again this weekend i'm grabbing another one of these for my wife to ride and we're going to do some mud this weekend so stay tuned uh, if you like the content like comment subscribe and i'll see y'all next time